Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is John and today we have an in-depth topic to explore. The Second Vatican Council, commonly known as Vatican II. In this video, we will delve into the transformative council that took place in the Catholic Church during the 1960s. We'll not only explore its objectives, themes, and key documents, but also examine the positives and negatives of its implementation with a particular focus on its impact on music. So let's dive right in. To understand the significance of Vatican II, it's essential to examine the historical context and the state of the Catholic Church before the Council. The pre-Vatican II era was characterized by a conservative approach and limited engagement with the modern world. However, several factors were converging that would lead to the call for reform. Social, cultural, and political changes were challenging traditional norms, and many Catholics felt a growing desire for the Church to address these new realities. In 1959, Pope John XXIII announced his intention to convene a council, aiming to renew and adapt the Church to better respond to the needs of the modern world. This marked the beginning of the Second Vatican Council. Vatican II had a broad range of objectives and themes that guided its proceedings. One of the primary goals was the renewal of the Church. This meant an intentional effort to make the Church more relevant and responsive to the challenges of the contemporary world. Dialogue and engagement became key principles of the Council. The Church sought to establish meaningful conversations with other religious traditions, promoting mutual understanding and cooperation. Additionally, liturgical reform was a significant aspect of Vatican II. The Council aimed to revitalize the liturgy, making it more accessible and participatory for the faithful. One of the most visible changes was the introduction of vernacular languages in the Mass. Vatican II had a profound impact on the music of the Catholic Church. The Council called for a renewal of liturgical music, aligning it with the principles of active participation and vernacular language. Prior to Vatican II, Gregorian chant and polyphony were the dominant forms of liturgical music. These traditional musical styles, with their rich history and intricate compositions, had been celebrated in the Church for centuries. However, the Council encouraged the inclusion of contemporary musical styles and the use of vernacular languages in the Mass. As a result, there was a proliferation of what is commonly known as folk or contemporary liturgical music. These new musical styles featured simple melodies, often accompanied by guitars or other instruments, and lyrics in the vernacular language. The intention behind this shift was to create a more inclusive and participatory worship experience, allowing the congregation to actively engage in the liturgy through singing and joining in communal prayer. However, the introduction of contemporary music in the liturgy was not without controversy. Some saw it as a departure from the solemnity and sacredness associated with the traditional forms of liturgical music. Critics argued that the simplicity of the new musical styles did not adequately reflect the majesty and reverence of the Mass. They expressed concerns that the focus on congregational participation might overshadow the transcendent nature of the liturgy. Nevertheless, contemporary liturgical music gained popularity and became an integral part of the post-Vatican II Church. Many composers and musicians embraced the Council's call for renewal and created new songs and hymns. While Vatican II brought about positive changes and had a significant impact on the Church's music, it also faced challenges during its implementation. 
let's explore both the positives and negatives. Here are some of the positives of Vatican II implementation. Number one, increased congregational participation. One of the major positives was the emphasis on active participation of the congregation in the liturgy. It is worth noting before the Second Vatican Council, pre-Vatican II, Catholic active participation primarily centered on personal devotion and interior disposition during the liturgy, with limited roles for the laity. However, the Council brought about a significant shift by emphasizing the full, conscious, and active participation of the laity. This included encouraging their involvement in liturgical actions, ministries, and the life of the Church. Post-Vatican II, active participation expanded to encompass the laity's active engagement in the liturgy, parish life, evangelization, and social outreach. This shift aimed to foster a sense of co-responsibility and vibrant participation within the Catholic community. Number two, accessibility and inclusivity. The use of vernacular languages and the incorporation of contemporary musical styles made the liturgy more accessible and relatable to the lives of the faithful. While the implementation of Vatican II and its reforms faced challenges and varying interpretations, it did contribute to bridging the gap between the Church and the modern world by making the liturgy more accessible and fostering dialogue and engagement with others. Here are some of the negatives of Vatican II implementation. Number one, loss of traditional music. Some critics argue that the implementation of Vatican II led to a decline in the use of traditional forms of liturgical music, such as Gregorian chant and polyphony. This was seen as a loss of the rich musical heritage of the church. Number two, musical quality and aesthetics. Catholics expressed concerns about the quality and aesthetics of contemporary liturgical music. They felt that the simplicity of the melodies and the use of popular musical styles did not uphold the dignity and reverence of the Mass. Number three, disunity and disorientation. The introduction of new musical styles and the changes in liturgical music led to divisions within the church. Different preferences and interpretations of the Council's directives caused tensions and a sense of disorientation among some Catholics. That concludes our in-depth exploration of Vatican II, a truly transformative moment in the history of the Catholic Church. We've examined its objectives, themes, key documents, and the impact of the Council on music. As with any significant event, there were positives and negatives, and differing perspectives on the changes brought about by Vatican II. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more content. Thank you so much, and until next time.